Masahi was an ugly bullied starving African child, who was cursed with the stone god's blessing to destroy the entire world, and killed his mother before coming out of her. Throughout the years, all the other children tried bullying him to death, and even his father isekai himself for giving life to a demon. But when the kids were about to murder him, the earth god's powers activated, killing the other children in that instant. All of the villagers thought he was a worthless monster, so he was exiled from the village, and chained to a rock for the rest of his life. His only way of survival was to eat all the animal shit he could find. But one day, he saw the most beautiful girl in the world, and she was the first one in 3000 years to give him any food. But as she began leaving, she told him to keep this their little secret, and Asahi couldn't hold back his tears, because this was the first time a person showed him any kindness since he was born. Throughout the following months, Kaori began learning how to make him anything he wanted to eat, and tried to become the only friend he's ever had. So in all of his life, she slowly became the one sliver of warmth he wanted to protect. As the years passed, his body finally began growing and overcoming the curse, but when a drought caused a massive famine in the village, all the elders thought he was sucking the life out of the soil, and they swore to kill him. However, Kaori guarded him, screaming that he wasn't a monster, but the demons inside of the elders came out, and they began beating Kaori along with him. Although Asahi tried to protect the only friend he's ever made, an ugly disgusting witch came from the crowd and stabbed Kaori in the back, killing her in that instant. When he saw the lifeless body of the girl he loved, his body unleashed the stone god within him, and he broke the chains that held him all those years, before killing the disgusting witch with the same boulder they tied him up to. Before he knew it, the entire village had been wiped out, but none of it could bring back Kaori, and he regretted not telling her how much he loved her sooner. So he gave her the flower she grew on his arm, and the blood from all the dead villagers grew into a sea of red equinoxes. Their mystical powers copied his soul into a different body, and the mysterious hot goddess awakened his forbidden powers to destroy the entire world. Four billion years into the future, he was reborn as an ugly, disgusting, pathetic, worthless loser, with a miserable life that was even worse than his previous one. Because although he had new parents, they began abusing him again, to the point where he killed both of them with his powers, and gambled all of their life savings away. The worst part of all, however, was that he never learned how to talk to a single girl in the world. Just like all you disgusting loser incels watching the video right now. So, that one there was a violation personally I wouldn't have it. Being too broke to afford a shower, his home smelled like an anime convention. But while he was cooking ramen to avoid starvation, a rift split through space-time, and from inside, the hottest goddess appeared before his virgin eyes, without any plot armor. But as his ramen bowl dropped, she transformed into her smaller form and began slurping on his noodle. When he asked her who the fuck she was, she told him that she was Dora, and used her forbidden sucking technique to swallow all of his meat. However, he tried flushing her useless ass down the toilet. But no matter what he did, she kept reappearing to bother him. As he biked to class to get away from her, he wondered how he summoned a three million year old goddess, but she kept teleporting to follow him, saying she can make all of his wishes come true. However, he threw her worthless ass in front of Bus Coon, but she said that she would even give him her hot body if that's what he desired. However, he said her disgusting body was flatter than a surfboard and managed to get away from her. In class, her disgusting face splashed onto his window, but even though he tried to close it, she begged him to make a contract with her and kept calling him a moron in his desk. After all the bullshit he'd went through today, he screamed at her to shut the fuck up, shocking the entire class. So the teacher screamed that this attitude is why he's the only failure in the school, and everyone laughed at his worthless face. After sitting down, he realized he was the only one who can see her, so he decided to sneak out of the class while she was asleep. But while he was outside, some ugly bitch with a Karen haircut was waiting to see him, and ran up to give him a love letter. Just then, however, Dora appeared from his backpack, saying this is the only chance a failure like him would ever get at dating a girl. So Asahi snapped, throwing his backpack down, and screaming at her to get her ugly ass away from him. The poor girl ran in tears, and Asahi realized that he was going to be a virgin for the rest of his life. A few hours later, he came with a box of snacks to give to Dora, begging her to leave him alone in exchange for the food. However, she began to cry, saying that a goddess who gets rejected by her master is fated to wander alone for the rest of eternity. So before she disappeared, she asked him if she could take one last walk with him, promising to cherish their final moments together. As they walked around, she held his disgusting hand and transferred her mystical energy to his eyes, allowing him to see the truth about their world. 
all around him. An aura emanated around the people he saw, and she told him that everyone has the power to become a summoner. However, he was the last summoner to ever be born in history, and possessed the power of the twelve gods to destroy the world, or save it if that's what he desired. From inside the tree, a cat called Meow appeared. And Dora asked him if he would change the destiny of the universe to become a summoner and explore the new world with her. As he reached out his hand, she took it and locked their fingers, forming a seal between them and destroying the flow of gravity in that instant. After their contract was sealed, she made fun of him because his ugly ass fell for her trap and now she wouldn't ever leave him alone. However, Asahi was glad that things turned out this way because she had now become his slave and needed to obey every command he gave her. But after hearing those words, she jumped onto his back and summoned her wings, flying him around the city with her powers. But after realizing how beautiful the world truly was, he barely managed to stop her from crashing them into a building, and she was about to pass out from using all of her energy. They began slowly falling down, and later that night, Dora thought it was a miracle that they were even alive but the power went out in his house. After all, he hadn't been paying any of his bills after losing all his money in crypto, so Dora decided to awaken a secret power inside of him, and an energy sphere ascended to the sky, exploding into thousands of illuminating particles. As they fell down, they began healing his body, and Asahi asked her if she was really a goddess, so she decided to reveal everything. Three million years into the past, a cataclysmic war between the gods and titans ensued, and the entire world was destroyed. Among the war, she was chained in the middle of the void, and was isolated alone throughout all these years. The memories of all the pain she went through fried her worthless brain, so Asahi tried to make sure she was alright, but realized he was finally getting a break from her. However, he covered her up, and wondered how his new life as a summoner was going to go, not knowing there was a mysterious hot girl spying on him from the sky. The following day at school, Dora was showing off her hot body, telling him not to worry because he's the only one who gets to see her like this. Just then, the news announced that a mysterious ugly disgusting loser was seen flying across the sky, and Asahi's poor ass wondered why even the newscasters were roasting him. After three million years of no plot development, Dora wanted to feel a white sticky liquid on her body, so she asked him to put his lotion all over her back. Yes! 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 But he put on his headphones and ignored everything she said. She begged him to rub it on her, saying she'd allow him to massage her body. But just then, a tentacle monster took her hot body and began eating her out. Dora threw the bottle of lotion onto Asahi but he realized that she had gotten completely eaten out, and it spat her plot armor onto his face. Just then, the plant began rolling away, and although Asahi continued chasing it, Dora said she couldn't use any of her powers without being next to her summoner. So as he leaped to catch her, the plant monster blinded his eyes and sent him crashing into the wall, narrowly avoiding his plot getting destroyed. Eventually, the plant managed to escape into a festival, but as Asahi tried sneaking around the others, he realized that he had completely lost her. But before he could escape, some massive meathead jumped from the sky, telling him to apologize for rejecting his hot sister in such a disgusting manner. However, Asahi said his sister looked like she fell from heaven, because her face was even more fucked up than her disgusting brothers, and ran away. You're a victim! Mm. While he kept running, Dora's voice began fading, and she told him that she would die soon if he didn't reach her. Just then, some random child said that Asahi had been misguided, and asked him if he could interest him in becoming a Jehovah's Witness. However, Asahi jumped on his worthless face, saying he wasn't interested in his pyramid scheme. As he got closer to the cactus, he jumped onto it, but realized that it was an innocent girl. So he tried listening to the musical background coming from Dora's ears, and knew there was only one band who created music that awful. When he got to the Screamo concert, he felt Dora's presence getting closer, but she stopped responding and was beginning to lose all of her energy. As he thought about how to save her, he began screaming that he was happy getting rid of her worthless ass. So when she heard that, she regained all her energy and began beating up the plant to get out. After opening its mouth, Asahi climaxed from seeing the greatest plot in all of anime, and knew something was going to be long, and it definitely wasn't this day. After he covered her up, the plant ran back to a hot girl in the distance, and as Dora launched to beat them up, the girl vanished into thin air. Although Dora wanted to follow them, Asahi told her that they would find them a different day, because the girl seemed extremely dangerous, and was able to control her summon while hiding. At the same time, an old man told the girl to never let Asahi get away, because he needed to see the last god's powers, 
and after she left, he was excited for the moment when Asahi reincarnates in his godly creation. The following day at school, the hottest anime thighs began walking towards Asahi, and although all the guys wanted to see her, she ignored them and walked towards Asahi's desk, giving him a note before leaving. When she was gone, the guys opened the letter, reading that she would be waiting for him in the woods after school. When classes were over, all of them followed Asahi to see what he would be doing with the girl. But the sis Khan screamed at him for rejecting his sister and stealing the hottest girl away from him. As he kept walking away for hours, he eventually arrived at the forest. But the guys had still been following him. A few minutes later, he saw Meow again, and told her to stay careful in the forest, glad she was still safe. Eventually, vines began appearing to tangle all the worthless guys, letting Asahi go inside alone. However, he realized the destination she took him to was a dead end. But just then, the trees were forced apart. The same way he was going to force apart Dora's leg. After walking through the path, he saw the hot girl once again. But the plant told him to hand over the spirit or he would lose his life. However, Asahi said he wouldn't give over his new pet, saying he was attached to Dora. But those words angered the girl as she threw a viney rose towards him, scratching his cheeks from the wind. Just then, the plant extended into a viney sword that crushed the ground and Dora nearly passed out before trying to find a weapon to use. As Asahi kept dodging, she told him that she would bring her weapon soon. But the mysterious girl summoned a giant root from the ground, and as she waved her hand down, thousands of plant blades began rushing towards him, and vines began penetrating the ground to slash him down. The plant thought they could win this fight with just 30% of their power, so the girl decided to summon a beast from the ground, and a massive tree appeared. As Asahi looked at the tree, he realized that he had the most worthless summon. But before it punched Dora to crush her, she managed to narrowly evade it and began flying away as the tree kept chasing her. However, two vines restrained her, and as the girl signaled for the tree to end her, he rushed to protect Dora, getting crushed under the tree's palm. When the dust settled, they realized that Asahi was now dead too, but a circular light shined through and both of them came out with Dora's special cleavers. The plant told the girl to use all of her powers, so the tree readied its fist to strike towards Asahi. However, Asahi asked Dora to lend him her power, and after he punched towards the tree, its hands were frozen before it got pushed away. But when it tried attacking him, Asahi used Dora's crystal wings to evade the tree's attacks, and managed to land on its arm. As soon as he did, he activated his crystal shoes, and began rushing up its arms while slashing it down. After completely stripping the tree down, he leaped back before rushing forward, and jumped with all of his power to break the tree's core, destroying it in that instant. Once the dust settled, Dora ran over to hug Asahi, wondering how he knew how to destroy the tree, so he revealed that he has a lot of experience beating wood. As the girl went over to make the tree disappear, Asahi thought she was even prettier up close, and Dora ran forward to eliminate her for stealing her boyfriend. However, Asahi protected the girl, and when Dora wondered why he was siding with the enemy, he revealed that she wasn't even using all her powers in the fight, and that she could easily crush them. Just then, Dora realized that an army of tree monsters were waiting to destroy them, and the plant said only Asahi passed the test. With Dora desperate to make peace, she began suggesting that they follow them home for dinner. However, the plant thought her worthless face should be crushed, and said that they weren't hungry. Just then, the girl's stomach began to growl, and they realized that she was actually starving. So that night, as they ate dinner together, the plant thought Asahi's food was the best he's ever had, and began saying that they were better off as friends. When Asahi wondered why they were attacked in the first place, the plant revealed that they were the city's guardians and said that they actually took him for an enemy. The plant tried suggesting that he joins their team, but the girl stuffed her meat into his mouth and left the house, so Asahi followed her. Outside, Asahi tried using his best pickup lines, thinking he might get lucky with her, so she told him that her name was Hana. As she gave him a dark rose, she said she would be watching him and Dora, hoping they would be on their best behavior. Just then, both spirits appeared, and Dora thought he was about to get a proper date this time. However, as she left, Asahi revealed that her flower actually meant that he belongs to her. A few days later in class, a giraffe mysteriously stuck his face inside, and all the students were creeped out by the sight. As they wondered if there was an animal invasion, a raccoon jumped into the class, and a girl nearly shat her pants, as several raccoons started destroying the room, even pulling down the useless teacher. Just then, Asahi discovered that more animals were running through the hallway 
and started running off too. As they arrived at the exit, they spotted a panda and Asahi managed to step on his brakes. However, he decided to squeeze himself outside and realized that the entire city was in f***ing chaos. At a basketball court, a chimp caught the ball and started playing like the next Michael Jordan, even scoring his first attempt. However, the boys were creeped out and ran away instantly. At the same time, an army of alpacas ran before Asahi and an instructor screamed for the students to head for the school gym. However, Dora began pulling him away, saying that he wasn't supposed to hide like every other disgusting loser since he was already a summoner. Just then, Asahi noticed all the animals in the city and wondered how this became the animal kingdom. Before his eyes, a reporter revealed that the animals escaped from the downtown zoo and warned everyone to head for the nearest evacuation center, but a parrot knocked her for opening her disgusting mouth. At that moment, Asahi noticed a girl on the street and thought she would be devoured by the lion, so he tackled her to the ground. As he wondered why she was staying so close to the beasts, the girl grew angry and he noticed the cat before him. At once, he caught it and tried taking it home, but it clawed at his face and returned to the girl. Dora thought the girl was strange and told Asahi to be careful around her. At the same time, Hana and her plant appeared on a rooftop, realizing the girl summons monsters. Hana thought it would be an easy win, and they jumped towards the ground. At that instant, the plant spat flaming bullets and smoke erupted around them. As they landed, Hana summoned black rose and vines restrained the animals, but the girl escaped just in time. So with a snap, a large root pulled them up and hung them mid-air. As the plant demanded to know why she freed all the animals, the girl said that this was always their land before the humans took over. The plant thought she was speaking trash and told her to hand over her summoned spirit, but she demanded for her animals to be released instead. As she grew angry, she appeared behind Hana with a kick, but she blocked her strike. As the girl prepared a powerful claw, Hana cast her away, but she returned instantly and nearly ripped her hair off. Impressed with her attempt, the girl started clawing at her face, but Hana dodged everything as they continued fighting back and forth. Just then, Dora drew her cleavers, wondering whom they should support, but Asahi suggested that they sit this one out. At the same time, the girl continued clawing at Hana and eventually slit her face, forcing her to back away. Even so, the girl would not back down, so Hana summoned vines to block her attack, managing to repel her. As she tried to whip her, the girl jumped away and dodged the whip, but her ankle was caught, and Hana pulled her through the building until she slammed the ground. Even so, the girl would not surrender and began charging at her, but Hana started swinging her whip. As the girl activated the eyes of eagles, Hana's movement became slow to her and she began drawing closer. In an instant, Hana summoned a large vine, but the girl activated the speed of leopards and started flashing around like light. Realizing her opportunity, she activated the might of bears, but Hana evaded getting crushed. With ferocious power, the bear flipped the road, but Hana managed to stop it with her whip, and her plant told her that it was starting to lose his strength. So she summoned a tree monster to end the fight, and it rushed to slam rubble on the bear. However, it would not surrender, and they locked hands in a tussle. Just then, Hana's plant penetrated the tree, and she fortified it with a spell. As its eyes glowed, it grew extra hands and rammed a flurry of punches into the bear before punching it away. Before it fell, the tree caught it and squeezed it in a bear hug until it scattered into a hundred pieces. However, the parts remerged and formed a pack of wolves. At the same time, they jumped at the monster and started biting its parts. As one ripped it apart, Hana felt the wound, so she fortified the tree into piercing form, causing the wolves to back away. With a powerful spin, the monster split all the wolves to bits, and Asahi realized the cat was wounded. Just then, the bits emerged and formed a monster snake, instantly constricting the tree. As it tried fighting it off, the snake ripped its arm off, but he flung it into the wall. With both monsters unwilling to surrender, Asahi realized that Hana's arm was wounded, and that she would soon lose consciousness. At that moment, the cat released a ferocious breath, and both monsters were prepared to end each other. Realizing he must end the fight, Asahi asked Dora for a non-lethal weapon, and hurried off with her. In an instant, they restrained both monsters with soul shackles, and Asahi told Hana to think about her useless life for a moment. As the girl returned to her human form, she tried saying that the fight wasn't over, but Asahi said that their fight was as pointless as their worthless lives. As he lifted the cat, he revealed that she was actually the summoner, and the spirit vanished at that instant. Asahi thought that Hana was too useless for her own good, and wondered why she was always too moronic to consider every possibility before engaging in a fight. He said that the cat must have had her reason for causing chaos in the city, and began treating her wound. 
His words inspired the cat, and she remembered when he first found her and treated her injury. In her agony, she bit his hand, but he finished treating her anyway and decided to name her Meow. As Dora realized the cat was now at peace, she told Hana that they would be leaving with her, but the plant demanded for the cat to be handed over immediately. However, Asahi would not change his mind and said that he would only hand her over once she was healed up. As the plant tried to challenge him, Dora threatened it with her cleaver and said that she would cut it to pieces like a useless weed. Realizing they have no other choice, Hana decided to retreat and caused the tree monster to disappear before walking away. That night, they realized that all the animals have been captured, and the useless reporter looked like she was hit by a bus. As Asahi wondered how a cat could become a summoner, the girl, Meow, revealed that every single animal could be a summoner, and said that her brother was the coolest summoner of all. However, she grew sad, recalling that he abandoned her several years ago. She had tried searching for him, but temporarily lost her summoning powers after sustaining injuries. In her desperate attempt to find him, she decided to release all the animals into the city, hoping to draw his attention. However, her attempt was as useless as Asahi's face, but Asahi told her not to feel sad. Meanwhile, a crow was spying on them outside, and soon rejoined a million other crows, revealing her brother. A few days later, as Asahi answered the door, he discovered a bunch of ugly green alien dudes. As he wondered who they were, one told him that Hana was inviting them for dinner. However, he thought he would probably be the dinner and tried shutting them out, but they revealed their weapons, and Asahi realized that he has no other options. Before long, they started carrying them towards the helicopter, and they soon arrived at the mansion. As Hana welcomed them, they realized that the home was pretty much a paradise. Just then, they discovered a fire monster grilling their pork, and Asahi wondered if they were all summoned spirits. But the plant revealed that they have only one summoner, and Hana invited them inside. Inside the house, they noticed a large statue, and the plant told them that she was the first leader of the Watchers. As they began climbing up the steps, Asahi heard his mother's voice and thought the statue was speaking to him. Before he knew it, he realized that he was in a new world and saw his mother waving at him. However, Dora stopped him from walking closer, and the useless plant told him that he was only daydreaming. Before long, they arrived at a dining room, and an old man introduced himself as Harlan. He was Hana's grandfather, and was the head of the Black Rose family. Dora thought he was a regular old man, but he forced them to sit with a single gesture, and Asahi realized that he has an incredible aura. As he apologized for summoning them, he began saying that a crystal was the source of all their spirits, and that it was a god and at the same time a devil. For centuries, human summoners have waged wars over it, creating a separation between the Watchers and the Destroyers. These Destroyers were a sinister group, who were looking to take over the world. As he wondered what faction Asahi would rather join, Dora voted for the Avengers and the cat voted for the Justice League. But Asahi silenced their useless mouths and reminded them that this is a budget Chinese anime with an ugly worthless loser protagonist. Unwilling to choose a faction, Asahi tried saying that his parents have warned him to stay away from old men's group, but Harlan decided to reveal his entire history. His parents actually abandoned him since he was only five and had disappeared without a single trace. Harlan revealed that he dyed his hair in a desperate attempt to conceal his identity and thought he probably felt uneasy on the inside. He told him that his life was not a coincidence and that he managed to summon Dora because he has a special ability inside him. Just then, Dora started emptying Asahi's wallet and discovered his childhood photograph, realizing he was actually blonde and that Harlan had said the truth. They were shocked by this realization, and they wondered how he knew so much. A few minutes later, a giant ball began falling towards the mansion and crashed through the roof, but Harlan struck it with a blow, causing the windows to explode from the collision. Just then, they discovered a man before them, and Harlan revealed that he was a destroyer. As the man prepared himself for an attack, Harlan realized that the destroyers have been spying on them and readied himself for the battle. At that instant, he summoned a flame, saying that he would eliminate every single one of them, and their blows collided, causing a great flame to erupt. As the destroyer flew to end him, he escaped, and dodging his blow, he froze his arm and punched his back before following with lightning, electrocuting him for a moment. However, the big guy would not go down, and unleashed a mighty power that destroyed the mansion, but Harlan contained the blasts. He said that the mansion was no longer safe, and told them to leave immediately, hoping that Hana would protect Asahi. Just then, the destroyer jumped to end him, and the collision launched the others outside, but Hana saved them with her vines. At that moment, they realized that the entire mansion has been destroyed, and the servant tried warning them to run away. 
Before they knew it, another destroyer appeared before their eyes, shooting randomly, and eventually putting holes in the useless servant, before blasting the gardener. As she licked her gun in satisfaction, Hana thought of eliminating her, and struck the ground, trying to trap her in the vines, but the girl summoned a gun and nearly took her face. Asahi tried suggesting that they fight together, but she threw dynamites at them, and they exploded instantly. As Asahi regained consciousness, he realized that Hana was trying to capture the girl, and the cat spotted her brother in the distance. At the same time, several alien dudes tried to end him, but he prepared a great lightning, and destroyed them all in an instant. So the fire monster unleashed a mighty flame, but the man released his crows to devour it, until he caught him, and destroyed him instantly. Just then, he noticed the cat, and she transformed into Meow. As she tried asking why he left, he unleashed a powerful crow that went through her skull, making her return to her cat form. At the sight of this, Asahi began charging at the man, and prepared an energy blast to obliterate him. But a mysterious figure appeared and enchanted his mind, sending him off to the mysterious world and he realized that he has returned to being a kid. At that moment, his mother appeared, and he thought his dream has come true. However, the illusion shattered, and he realized that he was actually held by a demon. Meanwhile, Dora was trying to wake him up in the real world, but discovered that his soul was lost in another realm. On the other hand, Harlan continued kicking the destroyer's ass, and began knocking him around like a useless ball. As he punched him high towards the moon, he followed with a series of punches, before knocking him to the ground. In an instant, he appeared before him, and summoned energy blasts, demanding to know where his boss was hiding. As Hana realized that her grandfather was winning his own battle, she activated the Black Rose, and the tree monster nearly squashed the girl, but she escaped with her rocket boots. Just then, Green Eyes appeared behind the monster, and overwhelmed it before destroying it. At that instant, Hana's clothes ripped up, and the plant fell in exhaustion. But before Hana could recover from her injuries, a new girl appeared behind her and was ready to isekai her. In a flash, she slit her throat, and the plant screamed when she saw that. As Harlan heard the scream, he unleashed a healing magic on her, managing to close up the wound. However, the destroyer decided to utilize his distraction, and attacked with a powerful fist. But Harlan iced him to the wall. Just then, another destroyer appeared behind him, and unleashed a mighty crow that went right through him, allowing the evil girl to blast a hole inside his head, and the plant screamed at the shock. However, the memory of his granddaughter awakened his full powers, transforming him into a god. As the destroyer released a blast, the god hit him with an energy blast of his own, unleashing it deep into the forest. However, the destroyer restored himself, and the group surrounded Harlan. Just then, a new guy arrived, and the god tried to squash him, but he summoned the Grim Reaper, and he began absorbing the entire spirit until there was nothing left to absorb. So the Grim Reaper ripped off his energy source, and his soul left his body. As the man crushed it, one of the girls wondered if Dora and the plant should also be annihilated, but he decided to spare them. As a great energy surrounded them, they vanished instantly, leaving a gaping hole at the spot. The following day, as they waited for Hana to regain consciousness, Dora grew angry at the memories from the previous night, wondering why they were so useless to fight with the enemies. So Asahi revealed that the destroyers were stronger at night, and said that they could never stand a chance against them. However, Dora thought that was irrelevant, and began screaming for revenge, so Asahi calmed her down, and told her that he has found a lead. As he revealed a video of Harlan's fight, he said that a mysterious person streamed the entire battle with satellite cameras. When he checked who she was, he discovered that she knew everything about summoners, and thought that finding her would definitely give them an advantage against the destroyers. As Dora wondered how they would find her, Asahi revealed that she was having a book signing event. So a few hours later, as they were ready to meet her, he told the plant to watch over Hana, promising to return. Meanwhile in a faraway city, the mysterious girl abruptly stopped the train with her device, and unlocked the doors herself. As she arrived at the escalator, she used her magic to force it to ascend, and everyone wondered how the escalator was going up. Before long, she arrived at the city, and decided to change all the screens to her face, making herself a famous celebrity, and when she arrived at her event, she announced the start of her book signing. However, no one knew who the f her ugly ass was, and Meow spotted her with the eyes of eagles. As Asahi wondered if she was dangerous, he suggested that the girls keep their distance in the meantime, and thought that she may be very powerful, so they jumped towards the ground. In the meantime, the girl was exhausted from waiting all day, and realized that she was far too useless to sell even a single copy of her useless book. 
Just then, Asahi appeared before her eyes and started calling her book the next Twilight series. Eager to impress her, he decided to buy all her books and she thought that today was the greatest day of her life. However, she already knew who he was and asked to know what he wants. So Asahi revealed himself, realizing that the jig was up. However, she began to summon Dora and Meow and they wondered how she knew them. She told them that she has been spying on them and revealed that they were actually attacked by seven destroyers the previous night. She said that her special ability was her phone and that she could even see inside the White House. As Dora decided to take a look, the girl told them that her device always warns her in times of danger. Just then, it began warning them, and they narrowly dodged an explosion. As Dora wondered who launched the attack, the device started warning them about a high-grade danger, so the girl told them that several enemies were approaching them at the same time. Before they knew it, she ran off, and as they caught up with her, she told them that she was the target. However, Asahi thought she was important to them, and said that they would not abandon her. Just then, she barely dodged a blast, and they evaded an explosion. Before their eyes, strange machines started flying towards them, so they jumped off the bridge and landed inside a car, speeding away instantly. When Asahi wondered how the car was moving on its own, the girl revealed that she was controlling it with her device. Just then, they noticed that the machines were flying closer and the girl told them that they were destroyers. At that instant, they started firing at them, and the girl said that the machines were low-ranking spirits that were not worth worrying about. She said she has cut off their wireless signal so that they wouldn't call for backup. However, the machines continued firing at them and even hit a tire, but the car managed to regain control. Realizing no one would rescue them, Dora and Meow decided to take them on. However, as Meow launched a claw wind, the machine dodged, and she realized they were actually fast. So Dora decided to launch spirit swords, but the machine dodged everything. Just then, the girl managed to electrocute it, and they celebrated this success. However, the other machines started getting closer. As the girls launched their attacks, they evaded them all and started firing at the car. But Asahi covered them with a shield. So the machines doubled their ammo and started firing more bullets, weakening the shield. As they launched missiles, the girl thought they missed their target, but Asahi realized that they were actually aiming for the road, and the bridge exploded at that instant. As they tried flying over to the other side, the car descended, but Dora unleashed her crystal wings, managing to catch everyone. However, she soon lost her strength, and they fell immediately. Before they knew it, the machines surrounded them and began scanning their faces. As the girl activated her device, Truck Kun launched to Isekai the machine, before smacking more victims into an Isekai world. However, the machines soon returned and fired missiles at the truck, blowing them all away. Having had enough, the girl decided to activate her device, turning it into a gamepad, and restructured the truck into a battle robot before taking her place on it. As she was ready for battle, it began charging forward, taking all the onslaught and punched one into the ground. She tried celebrating this victory, but another fired at her robot, so she destroyed it and crushed its heart. The last machine tried running away, but she started chasing after it and smacked aside its missiles before catching it and crushing it at once. The group thought she was impressive, but she soon discovered a fuel leak in the robot. Just then, it exploded and sent her flying far away. However, as the group spotted her, they discovered that she was actually a boy, and Asahi realized that he was the ugly weirdo he came across while searching for Dora. As Dora looked at his wig, she thought he was a filthy disgusting psycho, and Meow told him to go to hell. However, Asahi thought he would be very useful, and invited him to join the group, but Stan was hesitant about joining a pack of ugly morons. The following day in Stan's van, he told them that this was actually his home, and that it was his secret laboratory but Dora thought he was still a useless disgusting psycho. As Asahi wondered how they would find the destroyers, Stan revealed that he has been observing the fluctuations in spiritual energy. He revealed that the green dots mark all the unawakened summoned spirits within the past month, but that the red dots mark the destroyers' activity across the city. As he sped the timeline, they discovered that the destroyers overwhelmed the summoned spirits, and Asahi realized that the destroyers have been snatching the powers of summoners. Just then, Stan decided to reveal a scan of Harlan's mansion on the night they were attacked, and as Asahi noticed all the summoned spirits, he realized that the mansion must have stored them. This made perfect sense to him, and he realized that the destroyers attacked the mansion so that they would steal all the spirits inside. As Stan revealed another discovery, they realized that all the summoned spirits awakened on a single day, and Asahi revealed that Dora was summoned on the same day. Stan thought that Dora was a strange spirit, 
and decided to ask who she really was. However, her memory scared the shit out of her, so Stan told her to be quiet, saying that they could discover what really happened at the mansion. And just then, the van pulled up at the site. As they noticed all the destruction, Stan activated recon mode, and a light dispersed around them, scanning the entire area. Just then, he spotted the family's camera spirit, and decided to access its memory, hoping to reconstruct the crime scene. When he was done, he revealed a hologram, saying that the first destroyer was an Earth Summoner, and that he descended from a portal so that he would not be discovered. As if that was not enough, he was certain that a dimensional summoner actually opened the portal for him. For the second attack, he revealed that the girl was an elemental summoner that uses fire element guns, and thought she was pretty much unstoppable. As he revealed Mao's brother, she began wondering if he was brainwashed, but Stan told them that his name was Crow, and that he was an animal summoner. When he wondered what happened after Asahi lost consciousness, Asahi told him that he found himself inside a strange world. Just then, Stan revealed another hologram, and said that his mind was hijacked by another man. As for the sixth member, he told them that she attacked Hana from the shadows, and that because of her element, she was always called Shadow. For the last of them, he revealed another hologram, saying that the man killed Harlan, and that he has the ability to absorb spirits. As he arrived at the gaping hole, he revealed that the true reason they were attacked was hidden deep in the ground. Determined to find out, he slid down into the hole, and the others followed him. As they observed the destruction, Asahi thought that the dimensional summoner must have been very powerful to vanish with half of the building. Just then, Stan began to scan the area, revealing a huge storage, and they realized that they were all summoned spirits. Stan began telling them that Hana's family have collected and sealed thousands of summoned spirits as the Watchers, and had secretly locked them away under the mansion. As the hologram disappeared, he told them that Hana's grandfather was the strongest watcher in the world, and he thought they were probably hopeless since he was dead. Just then, Asahi noticed a fragment and thought it was different from the rubble. As Stan scanned it, he told them that it was a chunk from one of the enemies and discovered a special particle on the surface. Now decided to sniff the scent and revealed that it was from a flower's fragrance she once came across. She said that it was the Equinox flower, and Stan discovered that it grows in the stone forest outside the city. A few hours ago, spiritual energy fluctuation was detected there, he said, and that one of the seven destroyers was probably there right now. Asahi thought he might be alone, and wondered if this was their opportunity to eliminate one of them. So Dora said they would surely win, but suggested that they run away once they started to lose. Her words made sense, so they all agreed, and Asahi suggested that they leave before sunrise. Later in the van, Stan decided to ask Asahi about his past, so he decided to reveal the truth. When he was five years old, his parents had always neglected him, so he burned their home down, and began surviving by eating leftover rice from the dumpster. As Dora noticed he was growing sad, she tried calming him down, but Meow decided to ask about her own past. Dora revealed that her own memories were vague, but remembered that she wandered around the world three million years ago, and had no place to go. She revealed that she develops a migraine every time she tries to recall the rest of her memories, and Stan said that she was telling the truth. He revealed that he has done a full body scan of her, and discovered that her heart was strapped with chains, so he thought that she didn't lose her memories, and said that they were probably sealed away. But when Asahi wondered how they could break the chains, Stan told him that even the gods couldn't break them. The following morning, as they arrived at the stone forest, Dora thought the place was scary, and wondered if they should return home. However, Asahi was determined to meet their enemy, so they started flying past the stones, and spotted the village ahead of them. As they walked through the old abandoned village, Stan began telling them that the place was wiped out 10 years ago, and that everyone who visits the village mysteriously disappears. A few minutes later, they arrived at a sea of equinox roses, realizing that they were definitely at the right place. Just then, Meow tackled them to the ground, saying that someone was inside the house. At that moment, the door opened, and an innocent man stepped outside. As he started working the soil, Stan decided to scan his face, and Asahi stopped Dora from going out of control, saying that they must discover who the man truly was. So they continued watching him for hours, and Meow told them that she detected no spiritual power fluctuation. However, they realized the signal was weak, and they watched the man as he headed inside. A few moments later, he returned with a meal, and Meow revealed that she could smell a thunderstorm approaching. Just then, a rat emerged from the ground, and Dora freaked out at the sight of it. As Asahi realized their cover was blown, 
he discovered that the man had noticed them already. So having no other choice, he decided to approach him, and the man told him that he hasn't had any visitors in years. Asahi tried saying that they were students who came for some field work. But when the man began to wonder who the others were, Asahi noticed that he couldn't see Dora and realized that he wasn't a summoner. As the man served him tea, Asahi threw it away immediately. However, the man returned with packed meals for him and even tried getting him some snacks, but Asahi stopped him. As he wondered if he lives alone, the man told him that he has been alone for many years and was happy to even see his ugly face. As the wind began to blow the flowers, Asahi decided to ask if he planted them on his own. So the man told him that he did, and began saying that the field was once a dry land that could not grow any fruits. However, a girl had planted seeds in the ground for many years, hoping to grow flowers someday, but none of the plants survived. Her determination inspired him to continue after her demise, and within a few months, he discovered that the flowers were growing on their own, until they covered the entire area. On the other hand, Miao realized that the storm had arrived, and the wind blew at the men. Asahi tried suggesting that they head inside, but realized that the man has fallen into a trance. Before their eyes, the wind began scattering his flowers, and the man grew angry at the sight. As he tried fighting to save them, he ripped his clothes off. And at that moment, Stan revealed that he was actually one of the destroyers, and screamed for Asahi to eliminate him immediately. Before they could reach him, lightning descended on him, blowing them away with the wind. As the power overwhelmed him, a thick wall formed around his body, and he tried asking for Asahi's help, but his body continued to transform until his transition to Ruthless was complete. As smoke cleared, the group realized that he was truly the monster who attacked the mansion. In an instant, he flew to end Asahi, but his holy shield took the impact of the blow, sending him stumbling away. In an instant, Mao appeared before him and kicked his face before jumping away. As she activated her claw wind, she scratched his back, but the marks vanished, and she realized that his skin was thicker than a wall. Just then, Ruthless charged at her, but Asahi and Dora slashed him from behind. However, their weapons broke and the marks disappeared, so Ruthless blew them away. Realizing their weapons were useless against him, Dora decided to summon a new power for Asahi, but asked Stan to protect them in the meantime. However, Meow still wanted more of the action, so she slipped under him and clawed at his back, before kicking him away. As she clawed at him once more, she told Asahi that she knows exactly what she was doing, and continued striking him. However, Ruthless managed to catch her foot, and smacked her into the ground before kicking her away. As Stan hurried to her, he discovered that she was badly wounded, but Ruthless started approaching Asahi. Having no other choice, Stan decided to step up to the challenge, saying that he would buy them a few extra minutes. Just then, he began reading the big guy's info, but he punched him away and tried pounding him into the ground until he vanished from his sight. Before he knew it, Stan appeared behind him and continued reading his stats, so he frantically tried to destroy him. But Asahi realized that Stan was using a hologram to form a shadow clone. As Ruthless continued his useless attempt, a dozen Stans appeared all around him, telling him that he was going straight to hell. However, he finally had enough and unleashed a mighty wind that destroyed the ground, blowing the real Stan away. As Asahi caught him, he cast a shield to protect them from all the rocks, but Asahi soon discovered skeletons under the ground. At that moment, he realized that Ruthless must have killed the entire village, and thought he really deserves to die. Just then, Ruthless summoned rocks from the ground and launched them forward, but Asahi cast a shield around them. As Asahi felt Dora's energy around his body, she told him that she was sharing her memories with him, and even the techniques of every weapon. With Asahi ready for battle, he started charging at the big guy and ripped his entire arm with his silver lance. Immediately, he returned again and sliced his body with a sky-rending sword, before knocking him back with reverse blade. At Stan's command, he stabbed his core and blocked his fist with a blade, before dodging and slicing him with a dragon-slaying sword. As he received Thor's hammer, he pounded him right into the ground, cracking his body armor and shattering it at that instant. As the man lay exhausted on the ground, Stan suggested that they destroy his core, but he begged them that he must stay alive. He told them that his name was Majuo, but said that staying alive was the only way to stop the parasitic spirit from escaping, and that the core on his heart is actually a seal. Just then, the core began to crack, and Stan told the others that he could sense a strong fluctuation in the spiritual energy, but a sword flew out with a large spike coming out of him. At the same time on a faraway tower, the leader of the destroyers discovered that Maduo's flame has extinguished. 
realizing something must have forced him to lose control. He told the others that he was in trouble, and ordered for everyone to be summoned immediately. Meanwhile on the mountain, Majuo's inner monster revealed itself, and Stan told the group that Majuo was dead, and that the monster had taken over him. Just then, it unleashed a terrible energy that caused spikes to eject from the rocks. As they managed to evade them, they decided to charge at the monster, but it tried to destroy the ground, so Asahi launched swords at it. Hoping to destroy it, Stan unleashed an energy blast, so Miao summoned her wolf fangs to bite the monster, but it vanished instantly. Before she knew it, the monster pierced her with a stake, and she fell down in her cat form. As Stan got distracted, the stone beast punched him far away, but as it prepared a powerful fist, Asahi dodged it, and slammed him with his Thor hammer. As he continued striking at the monster, the hammer broke to pieces, but he summoned a dozen swords, and launched it into his face. When the giant was unscathed, Asahi prepared a silver lance, and threw it right into his eye. Dora thought they got him for good, but the monster pulled out the spear and broke it before their eyes. As Asahi realized that its body was practically impenetrable, he told Dora to focus all her powers on him, hoping he could eliminate it with a single strike. So Dora unleashed all her energy, and Asahi prepared a great sword that was able to split anything apart. As he took off to the monster with his mighty sword, it blocked his attack and the sword shattered before his eyes. With Asahi still in shock, the monster punched him away, and he smacked into a rock, rolling over the ground. As Dora hurried to him, she tried waking him up, but Asahi was already inside her spirit prison. With a touch, a chain dissolved away, and the monster tried to end him, but Dora protected him with a shield, and the collision destroyed the ground. As the monster started destroying her shield, Dora cast a new one just in time, determined to protect Asahi. As she stood before the monster, he remembered his own lover, but punched her anyway. Just then, Asahi touched her crystal, and released all her energy. As the monster noticed the crystal, a thousand swords began descending from the sky, and nailed him to the ground. Before his eyes, a powerful goddess unleashed her mighty wings, and summoned the judgment of heaven. At that instant, a great sword began descending from the sky, and it pierced down on the monster, crushing him with the energy of a nuclear blast and shattering all the rocks around before draining his soul into the heavens. When the sky cleared up, Asahi noticed the goddess and thought she was Dora. However, when he woke up again, he discovered it was all over, and Stan revealed that they all managed to survive. Before long, they found Majuo's body, and realized that he was truly dead. As Stan wondered how they would find the other destroyers, Asahi told him that the destroyers would probably find them first. So they began to leave. That night, as the destroyers appeared at the site, they found Maduo's body, so Hart decided to read his memory. In an instant, the entire action flashed before his eyes, so he paid his last respects, and hoped to avenge his death. Meanwhile inside Stan's van, Dora realized that Asahi wasn't regaining consciousness as he had lost too much blood, so she tried healing him. At the same time, Stan discovered that Meow was having a fever, and hoped that the destroyers would not find them. But the device began to alert them of a massive amount of spiritual energy, and a portal opened before Shadow appeared in front of the van. As she cast a Shadow Blade, it sliced the van in half, and Asahi realized their lives were going to be in danger. Just then, Crow appeared from another portal, and as he blasted a flame that ripped their body, he destroyed their van, sending them flying away. Before they knew it, Flame appeared behind them, killing Stan and Meow instantly. As Asahi crashed to the ground, he realized that his friends were dead, and all the destroyers appeared before his eyes. Hart called him a useless disappointment, and told him to save his last words for the devil. Just then, Space began to cast a powerful spell that split him into little pieces, until his soul left his body. By the time he woke up, he realized that he was in a strange dimension, and a cloaked man appeared before his eyes. He told him that he was in the gap between space-time, and revealed that he was dead in the real world. As the man told him that his friends were all killed, Asahi grew angry and broke the glass, blaming himself for being too weak and useless. However, the man decided to offer him three minutes to return into the past, saying this was his way of apologizing for how badly he neglected him as a child. As he revealed himself, he told Asahi that he had forgiven him for burning their house, wishing he could have been a better father, but promised to meet him at the demon furnace. Before he knew it, he woke up in the van, and Dora tried healing his wound, but he told them that the destroyers would soon arrive. A few minutes later, as Shadow appeared from the portal, she cast her Shadow Blade, splitting the van apart, but realized that it was empty. Just as she discovered it was a trap, 
an explosive went off, and Stan told the others that the explosion was successful. Dora tried saying that Asahi was a genius, but he told her that their battle wasn't over yet, and suggested that they rescue Hana immediately. Stan thought his words made sense, so he activated Nitro Boost and sped up the car. A few minutes later, they arrived at his home, and Asahi discovered that Hana had disappeared. As Dora wondered if she was already captured, Asahi found her letter and thought she must have left on her own. Just as they returned outside, Stan told them that the destroyers were a few kilometers away and summoned Hana's family's helicopter for their escape. Inside the helicopter, Asahi decided to read the letter and realized that Hana was headed to the demon furnace. After Meow told them that it was on a faraway island, Stan revealed that it's a holy site for training where only the few people who finished the trial would become full-fledged summoners. According to the legends, a mysterious spiritual energy existed in the deepest part of the demon furnace, and he thought they could acquire the ability to see the past and future. However, he wasn't sure where the island was and thought they were hopeless of ever finding it. But just then, Asahi spotted coordinates on the letter, and Stan realized that it was definitely the location of the demon furnace. So without anywhere else to go, they began heading towards it. After a few hours, they arrived at the supernatural border and discovered a mighty storm before them. Stan told them that the island was hidden beyond the storm, and said that this part of the ocean was the sea of death, because every plane disappeared once they reached this spot. As they headed into the storm, they wondered if they would survive, but Dora thought their useless asses were finally going to die. In that moment, they began going through a light and realized that they were out of the storm, spotting the island in front of them. However, Asahi began to sense a mysterious presence, and at that instant, Shadow appeared behind him and tried to end him with her Shadow Blade. But Asahi cast his Holy Shield, and the slash caused the helicopter to explode. As they began to fall, Asahi dodged another attack, so Stan activated his gamepad and transformed the broken pieces into a robot, saving them all. As they prepared for a battle, Asahi launched Mystic Cannon, and the girls launched a combined attack, but Shadow disappeared. Just then, Meow warned them about a new enemy, and Flame began firing at them. As the girls launched their own attack, Flame avoided them and started firing without a break until the robot was nearly destroyed. At that moment, Crow began flying towards them, so Asahi blasted him with the Mystic Cannon. As he exploded, Flaming Crows began falling into the robot, and it started dropping towards the island. But when it crashed, the destroyers appeared before them, and they realized they were toast. Luckily, a girl arrived and glued stickers on them, saying that they have violated the rules of the island. Her name was Bonnie, and she told them that this was their final warning. And when Flame threatened to eliminate her, Bonnie told her to open her f***ing eyes to realize that this is not a scripted scene from a Hollywood movie. She reminded them that they are at the Demon Furnace, and said that killing was only allowed inside the arena. Shadow grew angry at her words, and threatened to annihilate her, but Hart stopped her from causing trouble, having been a former participant on the island himself. As he decided to leave, they vanished instantly, and the group realized they were lucky to have survived. So Bonnie officially welcomed them to the island, and said that she hopes to see them in the arena. As Asahi tried asking her a question, she took off instantly, so they started running after her. After a few hours, they grew exhausted, and wondered if they would ever make it to the town. However, a man appeared before them with an ugly monster, and offered to give them a ride. He said that he was a traveling merchant, and told them that his name is Richard. So with the others too exhausted to even speak, Asahi decided to accept his offer. As they rode off on the monster, the man wondered why they looked like homeless brokies, so Dora revealed that they were running from the destroyers. To calm them, Richard began telling them that the island was a safe haven for everyone, and said that no one could ever harm them here. He revealed that the Watchers and Destroyers united for peace after a long war, and that the ancient summoners built the island away from the world so that every battle between the Watchers and the Destroyers would be fought inside the arena. This kept the peace on the island, and Richard told them that they would always be safe. Just then, they arrived at the town, and Richard led them to a pub. As they drank a bottle of green liquid, Dora thought it was refreshing, but they soon noticed that it was actually healing their wounds. Richard revealed that it was medicinal underground spring water, and said that it was very special. So the group asked him for more, but Richard thought they were all clueless newbies, and decided to offer them more bottles. When they were done, the owner told them that they were owing over $200,000 for the drink, and Asahi wondered how they could ever pay it back. 
However, Richard offered to pay for them, and suggested that they repay him in the future. As they went through the town, Richard began telling them that only the losers at the Demon Furnace live here, and the group realized they were all summoners. Just then, they arrived at a store and decided to change their outfits, so Richard decided to pay for them, but whispered to the seller to prepare a trap. That evening, as they arrived at the demon furnace, Dora thought it looks like heaven, so they began climbing to the top. At the gate, Bonnie began welcoming all the summoners, revealing that she would give the winner a belly dance without any plot armor, and let him do anything he wants to her. Sorry guys I need to end the video and register for this battle now. If you don't see me again, know that it was worth it. With all the summoners ready for some action, she told them that the only way to register for the contest was to walk through any of the four doors. However, as the group tried entering the first door, a robot said that they must pay a registration fee of $2 million to be allowed inside. As Asahi wondered how a useless brokey like himself could afford it, Stan paid his own fee and revealed that he wired all the money from a Mexican cartel's bank accounts. Before they knew it, a fat ass loser commanded them to step aside and paid his own fee in cash. For the second door, only beautiful girls would be able to go inside, so Dora transformed into her hot form, instantly getting through with Asahi. Mayao tried to act cool as well, but the guard told her she should have trained her ugly face instead of her combat skill. Damn! For the third door, only those with a certain power level were able to cross through, so when a disgusting fatso managed to strike the wood to show his strength, Meow destroyed it with the strength of bears, and finally headed inside. Before long, Richard also arrived, and Asahi wondered how he managed to enter the fourth door. Richard revealed that his reputation earned him a pass, and said that the door was only meant for celebrities. As Dora wondered what he was famous for, he decided not to reveal that he was an infamous sh face criminal who was a wanted loser all over the world. At that moment, Bonnie appeared before them, and began telling them that they were at the Demon Furnace Arena. This is one to a hundred floors, she said, and the first twenty floors are basically the beginner's level. As one summoner revealed that he has only made it past the fifth floor, another said that he barely made it past the third floor. Hearing their words, Richard revealed that this was his fifth attempt and said that he was always stuck at the first checkpoint and has never gone beyond the ninth floor, shocking all of them. As they arrived at the first checkpoint, Bonnie told them that there is a checkpoint at every ten floors and said that they would have to start all over again if they screwed up the trial. A few minutes later, they arrived at a luxury hotel, and Bonnie told them to get some rest before the first elimination round. As she let out those words, she vanished before their eyes, but Meow began to smell delicious food from the restaurant, and they hurried off immediately. A few hours later, as they played in the bath, they discovered that Hana was on TV, and realized that she was having an incredible display at the competition. On top of that, she had made it to the 11th floor already, and was considered the competition's brightest star having captured several monsters with Green Ball. With the group impressed, Asahi suggested that they give it their best shot, hoping they would come across her. However, as they headed into their rooms for the night, Richard thought they were all a bunch of useless clueless morons. That night as they slept, Asahi's room transformed into a cell, and spikes ejected from the walls. As the room began closing in, Asahi tried to open the door, but realized that it was locked, and Dora discovered that the windows were sealed shut. Thinking she could rescue them, she summoned her cleavers and went to destroy the door, but they broke to pieces. Just then, Asahi realized that the entire room was a trap, and Dora started trying a series of weapons, but the walls continued closing in. However, just before they met their end, Asahi suggested a new idea, and they managed to open the door with a skeleton key, narrowly escaping outside. At that moment, they realized that every single room was a trap, and hurried off to find Meow. Before their eyes, a green ugly cockroach began crawling out of her room. As Asahi tried to squash it, they discovered that it was actually Mao, and she revealed that it was the only way she could escape. At the same time, the other summoners started escaping from their rooms one after another, until Stan was the only one left. As they noticed a red paint spreading out of his room, Meow thought he had probably met his maker, and decided to pay her last respects. However, he fell from the ceiling, and revealed that he managed to escape through the vents. At that moment, they began hearing a voice on the PA system, and an ugly clown announced that he was the boss of the first floor. And at that instant, the hallway began to explode. As Asahi and Dora narrowly dodged the traps, Stan nearly met his maker again. So Dora suggested that they head for the lobby, and they began running towards it, but the floors exploded 
and a useless man fell into the lava. Asahi warned the others to run away, but the ground collapsed and Stan began falling in. But Dora unleashed her wings and managed to save him. However, the other summoners clung onto her and Asahi saved a few more. As the round continued, some lazy disgusting men began crying for their mommy, but others flexibly evaded the traps. As the group ran towards the exit, they began wondering if it was truly an exit or just another trap. However, as they had nowhere else to go, Asahi decided to kick down the door, and they discovered that it was truly the lobby. As the boss welcomed them for passing the first trial, he introduced himself as Renault, but the summoners thought he was too ugly and tried to kick his ass. However, he unleashed a powerful energy that shackled them to weights, leaving them completely fucking useless, like my dad who went to get milk but never came back. Sorry I don't know where that came from. With a snap, a treasure chest appeared before their eyes, and Renault said that it was a reward for passing this floor. As a man opened his chest, he realized that it was stuffed with gold, and Asahi discovered a saffron ring in his chest. As Meow realized that she got a rough diamond worth a million dollars, Richard revealed that his useless luck brought him a pair of mismatched old boots. Dora tried telling Stan to open his own box, but realized that he was praying for a special gift. However, as he opened his box, he discovered explosives inside. Just then, Renault revealed that it was their real gift for surviving this floor. As he activated it, Asahi cast his holy shield, but the explosion destroyed the ground, and they began falling into the abyss. Inside the abyss, a strange girl appeared before their eyes, welcoming them to the second floor, and they nearly shat their pants. However, they soon realized she was Bonnie, and she told them that it was merely an act, but they screamed at her for being worthless. She said that she was the boss of this new floor, and as she revealed that the next trial was a race, they realized that they were actually on a huge racetrack. For the rules, Bonnie told them that only the first 15 contestants to complete 20 laps would qualify for the third floor, and said that they would be streamed on TV. As they began warming up for the race, Mao told them that she would definitely win, but Dora thought she has the upper hand. However, they soon discovered that the repeat challengers came ready with their wheels, and thought it wouldn't be an easy win after all. Just then, Bonnie fired a gun, and Meow immediately took the lead, running off with her cheetah speed. As a squirrel ninja tried to overtake her, she realized that he was an animal summoner just like her. A few moments later, Dora and Asahi also appeared, and began flying towards the finish lane. As a wizard began speeding away on a witch's broom, a poison master nearly overtook him, and the other losers tried keeping up with them. Just then, Bonnie noticed a useless famous manga artist who has nothing better to do with his time, and she wondered why the worthless loser was here. As Hiro realized he's been discovered, two losers tried asking for his autograph, but he ditched their ass immediately, and began drawing fast lines to increase his speed as he blew past the other racers. One ugly loser tried saying that he was cheating, but Bonnie told him to shove his big empty head up his ass. In an instant, a flame swooshed past her, and she realized that Stan was riding on a rocket, and was overtaking everyone with great speed. As Meow wondered how he managed to acquire it, Stan revealed that he stole it from the military. However, as they began approaching the final lap, Asahi told the others that the repeat challengers were hatching a dirty plan to annihilate everyone, so they would be the last men standing. Just then, Deadeye aimed at several racers and blasted them with Calamity Trigger, ending their chance of making it to the finish lane. As he prepared to end one ugly loser, Dora flew past him, so he fired six shot Slayer. As Dora tried swerving around the track, they discovered the bullets were curving and realized they could not evade them, so they flew towards Deadeye and made him take all the bullets back. However, the Poison Master decided to reveal his own power and began to release clouds of poison mist on the racers, causing all the morons to lose their mind, and one of them even fell into the abyss. Desperate to save everyone, Meow flew towards him, unleashing her venomous snake form, but Poison Master was unscathed, and called himself the air. Just then, the squirrel ninja appeared before him, and unleashed a tornado that started absorbing him like dust. However, another nutcase began slashing his swords, looking to slice everyone up like cabbage. As two horrendous losers tried begging for their lives, the menace thought they were better off dead, and tried slaying them anyway. But Stan directed his rocket at him, hoping to save them from their doom. However, he sliced it apart, making it crash into the ground. As he was ready to slice off Stan's head, Hero blocked his attack, and began reciting a boring lecture about life and friendship. However, his words began turning into spells, and they smacked the knight one after the other. So Hero stuck a spell on him, and as it began to electrocute him, he released his ink, 
and began writing a spell with his ink stroke slash. In an instant, the knight shattered to pieces, and the group were happy to see Stan alive. At that moment, Bonnie revealed that there were only 15 racers left, and said that they would all qualify for the third floor once they cross over the finish lane, so they took off immediately. Meanwhile on the destroyer's base, Flame and Shadow faced off for a battle, looking to prove the better fighter. As they charged at each other, Flame blocked her slash and narrowly missed her head, before firing bullets. But Shadow entered the ground. As her shadow zigzagged, she appeared out of the ground and they began clashing weapons. Just then, Shadow summoned her shadow clones, and they started charging at flame, but she destroyed one instantly. As she summoned her gun, she began firing at them, annihilating them one after another. Shadow tried sneaking up on her, but she continued shooting at her until she backed away. Just then, flame summoned several guns, and started firing them at the same time, so Shadow created a shield and started blocking all the shots. Having seen enough, Space screamed at them to stop, and as they did, Flame began to wonder why they couldn't storm the Demon Furnace already. She was itching for some real battle, and said that she would annihilate all the losers competing in the furnace so she can eliminate Asahi. However, Space revealed that she tried penetrating the furnace the same night after they left the island but could not even teleport inside, before getting chased away by the security. Shadow said that the walls must have had an invisible barrier, so Space told them that all she acquired was a useless TV. With a snap, the TV appeared out of the ground, and as she turned it on, they found Bonnie on the screen. As Bonnie began to reveal the highlights from the contest, the girls realized that Mao won the race, and that Asahi was second. However, as they had a cooking contest on the third floor, Asahi won this round with his beef ramen and even the judge could not resist devouring his meat. On the other hand, Meow managed to improvise with her fruits, and Stan created a robot ice cream. For the fourth round, as they had a karaoke contest, a metal rock star blew everyone away, and they nearly passed out from her terrible noise. Having seen enough, Flame fired at the TV, and began to wonder how they would infiltrate the demon furnace. Just then, Hart arrived, and Dream suggested that the girls visit the island for a few days, saying that the air would be good for them. As Hart agreed, he revealed a powerful monster, and said that they must take him along as their companion. But even the girls were frightened by the sight of him. Hart said that he was his gift to Asahi, and revealed that he would finally kill him, along with all his friends. To give a summary of the trails so far, Bonnie went to meetings with the elders, and told them that a total of 92 contestants had signed up for the trails, and only 15 of them managed to reach the fifth floor. Thanks to contestants using their powers, Bonnie had managed to gather thousands of spiritual energy, and went through a teleport to the demon furnace that was 100 floors down. Arriving there, she went through a door and saw the changed-up goddess Pandora that was the source of energy for all the sleeps. She had been in slumber for so long, and Bonnie injected all the spirit energy she had gathered into her, in hope that she would rouse from her slumber, and all their efforts would be paid off. Watch this next video, till next time my fellow legendary plot masters.